In this video, I will be discussing about the area under a plane curve. So, how do we find the area under the plane curve? Suppose we have here a curve, say this one, that is defined by the equation y which is equal to f of x and we want to find the area under this curve from x is equal to a to x is equal to b. Now, we've learned from our basic education way back to our elementary days and even in the high school days that finding areas of known geometrical polygons such as square, rectangles, triangles are very, very easy because we have known formulas that we can use in finding the areas of these polygons. However, this area that we want to find, this one, is not an easy area to find because the shape is an irregular shape. So, by intuition, a simple method of finding this area is by approximation. And to approximate this area, we need to subdivide the whole area, region, into rectangles here. So, suppose I will subdivide this one and approximate the whole area by these four rectangles that I am drawing here in the figure. So, the whole area region is approximated by the sum of the areas of these four rectangles here. So, the area of this first rectangle and then added to the area of this second rectangle and added to this third and the fourth rectangle in this drawing. So, mathematically, we can write the area is approximately equal to the sum of the areas of these four rectangles. So, this is just the summation of the rectangle, area of the rectangle whose height is y and whose width is, say, delta x. Because the width of this rectangle is delta x. And we know that the width of every rectangle here is delta x. However, we notice that this area is not a perfect area for the region that we want to find because we have what we call the excess area here. So, subdividing the whole area by just four rectangles is not a good approximation of the area of the region that we want to find. So, what we will do if we will copy the same drawing here in this uh, plane bounded by this uh, line x equals a to x equals b, a better approximation can be done if we will subdivide the whole area into, say, 10 rectangles or just 8 rectangles here. So, I'm subdividing the whole area into 8 subdivisions. And the whole region is approximated by the sum of these 8 rectangles here. So, the whole region is approximated by the sum of the areas of these eight rectangles here. So, this one plus the area of this one and this one here and so on and so forth. And you notice that the excess area is reduced to some extent. So, this is now the excess area. And take note that the approximation is not perfect. So that is why you see here that the area is only approximated by the sum of the areas of these rectangles here. And how many rectangles do we have? We have actually not only just 8 but say n rectangles because we keep on increasing this rectangle because we hope that this excess area will be minimized in the long run. And since y is just the function of x, we can replace our 
y as f of x here. So f of x sub i times its width delta x. And how many rectangles? Again, there are n rectangles. Now, you should realize that this f is the height of a particular rectangle and this delta x is the width of the rectangle. And also notice that this sum is a Riemann sum. However, this approximation becomes perfect if we will slice the whole region into infinitely many slices. Why? Because in the long run, this excess area will eventually disappear because this becomes very, very, very small in the long run. If we will subdivide the whole area into infinitely many slices. So we will write here the sum of all areas of rectangles. And there are how many rectangles? There are infinitely many rectangles. That's why we'll write here the limit of the sum of the areas of these rectangles and there are infinitely many rectangles here. So that is why the approximation becomes perfect. And we realize that this limit of a Riemann sum is just the integral of the function f of x dx integrating from a to b because we are slicing here from a to b so therefore this is now our new formula in finding the area under the plane curve above the x-axis hence geometrically the value of this definite integral represents the area bounded by this curve y is equal to f of x from a to b over the x-axis. So, therefore, we can apply this formula to this example number one here, where we were asked to find the area bounded by the parabola y squared is equal to 4x and the lines x equals 1, x equals 4, and the x-axis. So to solve this problem, let us first plot the graph of this curve. And this curve can be written as y, which is equal to the square root of 4x. So when x is 0, our y is also 0 here. But when x is 1, our y is 2 here. But when your x is 4, our y is 4 because 4 times 4 is 16 and the square root of 16 is 4. So here, this is 2, 3, and 4. So when your x is 4, your y is also 4. So the graph is this one here. It's a parabola opening to the right. So that's it. Now, we are asked to find the area bounded by this parabola and the lines x equals 1 to x equals 4 here. Then therefore, the area that we want to find is this region here. Now, remember that this parabola is defined by the equation y is equal to the square root of 4x. So to apply this formula is to draw first a representative area element for this region. And our area element is a vertical rectangle, a very slim rectangle here, wherein the width is dx and the height of this rectangle is a variable depending where is the rectangle between x equals 1 to x equals 4. So this depends to our y of this curve. Hence, our area can be solved by integrating the y, which is the height of this vertical area element, whose width is dx, 
and we are integrating all these vertical strips from 1 to 4 and remember that this y is defined to be our square root of 4x here and integrating our slices from 1 to 4 so simplifying further this is area which is equal to the square root of 4 if you can factor this square root of 4 here so we have square root of 4 times the integral from 1 to 4 of the square root of x dx and we know that the square root of 4 is 2 so this is 2 times the integral from 1 to 4 of x to the power 1 half dx because square root of x can be written in exponential form x to the power 1 half and integrating this one we have 2 times the integral of this which is x to the power 3 halves over 3 halves from 1 to 4 so we have the area which is equal to 2 times the reciprocal of these 3 halves which is 2 thirds times x to the power 3 halves evaluated from 1 to 4 so therefore this is equal to 4 thirds times this one which is evaluated from 1 to 4 so we have 4 to the power 3 halves minus 1 to the power 3 halves hence our area is equal to 4 thirds times 4 to the power 3 halves is equal to 8 because the square root of 4 is 2 and the cube of 2 is 8 and also this one is only having a value of 1 so therefore this is 4 thirds times 7 hence the area is equal to 28 over 3 square units so this is the area of this region here however I can solve this problem in another way so we label this one as our first method so this is our method a and now I will solve the same problem using another way so plotting the same curve here two three four so here we have this one a parabola opening to the right and we want to find the area under this curve from x equals 1 to x equals 4 take note that we are looking for this area here now looking back at our first solution we are slicing the whole area region vertically now what if we will slice the whole region horizontally so suppose this is our horizontal area element meaning one of the slices if you slice the whole region you notice that the right part of the slice is this line here and the left part of the slice is this line also here now you notice that the boundary of the slice is having the right boundary in this line x equals 4 and the left boundary x is equal to 1 however it has a different boundary if you if you got a slice somewhere here because the left boundary of this slice is the x coordinate of this curve here and not this line x equals 1 however the right boundary of this slice is the same with the right boundary of this slice here so therefore it is very very logical to subdivide the whole region into two regions here this region this one because all the slices are having the same right boundary 
and left boundaries here. But in this region, the slices are having the left boundary which is the x-coordinate of this curve. But the right boundary is the same with this one here. So therefore, this is our region 1, area 1. And this is also our area 2 here. And because this is our region or area 1 here, we need to find this point and also this point here. Now remember that the x coordinate of this point is 1. So when x is 1, our y is 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. However, this one, when our x is 4, so 4 times 4 is 16 and the square root of 16 is 4 also. Now that we have the coordinates of these two points, we can now find the whole area. And we say that the whole area of this region is equal to region 1, which is represented by A1, plus the area of region 2, represented by A2 here. So the whole area is equal to the integral of all the slices in region 1, which starts slicing from the bottom part of this rectangle from the lowest part, which is in terms of y, so 0, 2, 2, because you are now slicing parallel to the x-axis. So you're slicing your y from 0 to 2 there. So the area of every slice is having the right boundary of 4, this one, minus the left boundary here, which is 1. So 4 minus 1 times the width, and the width of every slice is dy this time. So this is dy plus the integration of all the slices from this 2 to 4 here because again you are slicing horizontally so this is from 2 to 4 and you should be careful that the right boundary which is 4 will be subtracted by the left boundary which is the x of the curve and the x of this curve this one is solving for the x of the function so x is equal to y squared over 4 so this is 4 minus y squared over 4 and again the thickness of every slice is dy this time so simplifying our solution we have the integral from 0 to 2 of 3 because 4 minus 1 is 3 and this is added to the integral from 2 to 4 of our expression which can be combined into one fraction so this becomes 16 over 4 because 16 over 4 is 4 minus y squared here so our whole area is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of the constant 3 dy added to 1 fourth because we need to factor out the constant of 4 in this denominator here so this becomes 1 fourth times the integral from 2 to 4 of 16 minus y squared so our area here is equal to the integral of 3 with respect to y is 3y and this is evaluated from 0 to 2 added to 1 fourth times the integral of 16 which is 16y minus the integral of y squared which is y cubed over 3 using our power rule which we've learned from the previous videos and this is evaluated from 2 to 4 so we have area which is equal to 3 times the upper limit which is 2 minus 
3 times 0. And this is added to 1 fourth times 16 times 4 minus 4 cubed over 3. And this will be subtracted by the same expression but you need to substitute 2 this time. So this is 16 times 2 minus 2 cubed over 3 here. So area is equal to 6 minus 0 because 3 times 0 is 0 plus 1 fourth times 16 times 4 which is 64 and this is 64 over 3 because 4 cubed is 64 minus 32 because 16 times 2 is 32 plus since minus of the minus is plus plus 8 over 3. Now simplifying further we have 6 plus 1 fourth times 64 minus 32 is 32 and minus 64 plus 8 is equal to minus 56 so this is 56 thirds and combining these two terms here which is this one and this one into one fraction this becomes 96 because 96 divided by 3 is 32 minus 56 and we know that 96 minus 56 is 40 so this becomes 10 over 3 since 40 divided by 4 is 10 and combining these two terms here we have 3 so this is 18 plus 10 so our whole area is equal to 28 over 3 square units and this is the area of this region here and now you can check that our answer is the same with our first answer using the first method here so this is showing that the two methods are equivalent slicing the whole area vertically so this is using the vertical slicing while here in the second method we are slicing the whole region horizontally now you see that the second method is more complicated than the first method so how do you know which one to choose now the answer to that question depends on the situation of the graph but what is very sure here that one method is easier than the other one and to choose which one you must be an experienced one by just looking at the graph of the region that we want to find because if you slice it and the boundaries are not changed then that is the shorter one since you can notice that in this solution the boundary of every slice is not constant because if the slice happens to be in this region the boundaries are this one but when your slice is here the boundary at the left is not anymore the line x equals 1 but it's the x coordinate of this curve here and that makes the difference between the two methods but one thing for sure is that they have the same answer now let's proceed to our example number two determine the area bounded by the curve y equals x cubed plus x squared minus 2x and the x-axis then we can solve this one easily if we will draw first the graph of this curve and sketching the graph of this one is to solve first the roots of this function so solving for the zeros 
of this function we have 0 which is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus 2x and factoring out common monomial factor which is x we have x times x squared plus x minus 2 but this quadratic can still be factored so we have x times x minus 1 times x plus 2 so equating each factor to 0 we have the zeros of the function which is 0 1 and negative 2 so we have three zeros here so plotting the zeros we have 0 negative 2 so it's here and positive 1 so this is negative 2 0 and 1 but when your x is negative 1 so this is negative 1 cubed which is negative 1 and negative 1 squared which is 1 so negative 1 plus 1 is 0 but negative 2 times negative 1 is 2 so that is why we are informed that the graph at x equals negative 1 is above the x-axis so graphing this curve we have this graph and the region that we want to find is this one here it's the area bounded by this curve and the x-axis now you notice that the region that we want to find is composed of two sub-regions this region which is represented by a1 and this region which is represented by a2 so we write here area is equal to area 1 plus area 2 and you notice that these two sub-regions can be easily obtained by slicing the area vertically so suppose this is our vertical slice here whose width is dx and whose height is the y of this curve however the area here when you slice it vertically the height is not anymore y but it's the negative of y because this is below the x-axis but still our thickness is dx so writing our area is equal to the sum of all slices from negative 2 to 0 so this is negative 2 to 0 of all the slices whose height is y whose width is dx and also the area of region 2 which is the sum of all the slices from 0 to 1 so this is from 0 to 1 whose height is negative y times the thickness which is dx so simplifying further we have the integral the sum of all the slices from negative 2 to 0 of y dx minus the integral of y dx from 0 to 1 because if we factor out negative 1 here this plus becomes negative now substituting the value of y we have our y which is x cubed plus x squared minus 2x dx minus the integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed plus x squared minus 2x dx so integrating this function we have the integral of x cubed is x to the fourth over 4 plus the integral of x squared which is x cubed over 3 minus the integral of minus 2x which is 
minus x squared and this is evaluated from negative 2 to 0 minus the integral of the same function so this is x to the fourth over 4 plus the integral of x squared which is x cubed over 3 and the integral of minus 2x which is minus x squared from 0 to 1 so therefore our area is equal to 0 so 0 to the fourth power over 4 plus 0 cubed over 3 minus 0 squared and the whole thing will be subtracted when you substitute negative 2 to this expression so this is negative 2 to the power of 4 over 4 plus negative 2 cubed over 3 minus negative 2 to the power of 2 and this will be subtracted by this expression here so this is 1 to the fourth over 4 plus 1 cubed over 3 minus 1 squared if you substitute 1 to this expression but this will be subtracted by this one when you substitute 0 so 0 to the fourth power over 4 plus 0 cubed over 3 minus 0 squared here so simplifying our answer we know that this one goes to 0 so 0 minus 16 because negative 2 to the power of 4 is 16 but divided by 4 is 4 plus negative 2 cubed is negative 8 but there is a negative here so this is positive 8 over 3 and this is positive 4 but we have a negative but the negative here becomes positive so this is positive 4 and this will be subtracted by this one here which is 1 fourth plus 1 third minus 1 and this is subtracted by 0 because we know that this one goes to 0 here so our area is equal to 8 thirds because 4 minus 4 is 0 and this will be subtracted by this three terms here which can be combined into one fraction having a denominator of 12 so this is 3 plus 4 minus 12 so area is equal to 8 thirds minus 3 plus 4 is 7 and 7 minus 12 is 5 so this is minus the negative 5 over 12 but the minus of negative 5 is positive 5 over 12 so therefore our area is equal to the sum of these two fractions which is having a common denominator of 12 so this is 12 divided by 3 is 4 and 4 times 8 is 32 so 32 plus 5 therefore our area is 37 over 12 square units so this is the area of the whole region bounded by this curve and the x-axis now let's proceed to our example number three find the area bounded by this curve from x equals 0 to x equals 1 now first let us sketch the graph of the curve now we notice that when x equals 0 this becomes 1 and the denominator becomes 0 squared plus 4 but the square root of 4 is 2 so that whole y is 1 half so when your x is 0 your y is 1 half so suppose this is our one half 
So the coordinates of this point is 0, 1 half. But because this is a square root, it has two roots, a positive and a negative root. So we have 0, negative 1 half. But when our x is negative 1, the numerator becomes 0. And 0 divided by a non-zero is 0. So if your x is negative 1, your y is 0. So this is negative 1, 0. So therefore, the graph is like this. So it's symmetrical about the x-axis. Now, at this time, we were asked to find the area from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So this is x equals 0 to x equals 1. So here, this is the line x equals 1. Hence, the area that we want to find is this one, and so with this one. However, it's okay to find the area only the upper portion because we know that the upper portion is just symmetrical to this area in the lower portion of the x-axis. So if you slice the area of this one vertically because it is very easy to slice vertically, we notice that the width of this slice is dx because we are slicing vertically we are slicing the x but the height is the y of this curve so it's the y of this curve which is defined to be y which is equal to x plus 1 over the square root of x squared plus 4 so therefore our area is equal to the integral of all the slices whose height is y and whose width is dx for every slice and slicing it from 0 to 1. So here, slicing from 0 up to 1 whose x is 1. But since there are two symmetrical regions here, we multiply it by 2 because this is just the area of the upper part. So area is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of our y which is x plus 1 over the square root of x to the power of 2 plus 4 dx. And we know that integrating this integral is not an easy one. So we apply the methods of integration which we've learned from the previous videos that to integrate this integral is to separate these two terms in the numerator. So we have 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of our x divided by the denominator of the square root of x squared plus 4 plus twice of another integral but for the one here so one over the square root of x squared plus 4 dx but we need to be careful that this one has also a dx so we are just separating x and the one so we have the x here and the one here because in this integral we can use integration by the power rule because if you use u to represent this integral here this radicand here x squared plus 4 we notice that our du is just 2x dx and if you divide both sides of the equation by 2, we notice that this is equal to x dx, which is found in our numerator here. And if you represent our a to be 2, which is the square root of 4, and our v as x, we notice that the differential of our v is dx 
which is found in our numerator here, 1bx. So, substituting these representations to these integrands here, we have area which is equal to 2 times the integral of x dx, which is represented by du over 2. So instead of writing x dx, we will write its representation, which is du over 2, over our denominator, which is the square root of x squared plus 4. But x squared plus 4 is now our u. So instead of writing that x squared plus 4, we will write u. So this is the square root of u. But remember that the limits of integration must be changed because our variables are already changed from x to u. So instead of writing 0, we will substitute 0 to our x. So 0 squared is 0 plus 4. The sum is 4. So the value of our u is 4. So instead of writing 0, we will now write 4 because that is the value of our u when x is 0. But when your x is 1, so 1, 1 squared plus 4 is 5. So 5 is the value of our u when our x is 1. So we will write 5 there. And this is added to 2 times the integral of 1 dx, which is represented to be our dv here. So this is dv over the square root of our x squared, but x is represented now by v. So this becomes v squared. And this 4 can be represented by the square of our a. So this is plus a squared. And we notice that this is something very familiar to us. And since our variable is changed from x to v, we need to change also the values of our limits of integration. So when x is 0, our v is also 0. And when our x is 1, our v is also 1. And we notice that this integrand is very familiar to us because this is an integration leading to logarithmic functions. Thus, simplifying our solution, we have 2 times 1 half because we need to factor out this 2 in the denominator of du outside the integral symbol we have the integral of u to the power negative one half du because this square root of u in exponential form is one half and if you move it up that becomes negative one half and this is integrating this one from four to five and this is added to 2 times the integral of this one, which is equal to the natural log of our v plus the square root of v squared plus a squared. And this is evaluated from 0 to 1. So our area, if you integrate the first integrand using the power rule this becomes 2 over 2 times u to the power 1 half over 1 half evaluated from 4 to 5 and this is added to 2 times the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 1 squared which is 1 and a squared which is 4 and the whole thing will be subtracted by the natural log if you substitute 0 here so this is the natural log of 0 plus the square root of 0 squared which is 0 plus a squared which is 4 here so 
the area is equal to 1 because 2 over 2 is 1 times the reciprocal of 1 half which is 2 over 1 times this one and evaluating this one by these limits we have 5 to the power of 1 half minus 4 to the power of 1 half plus twice of the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 5 and this is subtracted by the natural log of the square root of 4 which is 2 so we have area which is equal to 2 times the square root of 5 minus the square root of 4 which is 2 and this is added to twice of the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 5 minus 2 times the natural log of 2. Now using the properties of logarithms, we can use these coefficients of 2 as the power of this one here. So area is equal to 2 square root of 5 minus 4 if you distribute this 2 to this binomial here and this is added to the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 5 to the power of 2 minus the natural log of 2 squared because this 2 can be used as the exponent of 2 here so therefore our area is equal to 2 square root of 5 minus 4 plus the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 5 to the power of 2 over 4 because using the properties of logarithms the difference of the two logarithms is the logarithm of this quotient and this is the area of this region here which when you use your calculator this is approximately equal to 1.43 square units here and that's it if you learned something today please check out my channel for more videos like this and click subscribe click the notification bell below so you get notified whenever i will post a new video don't forget to like this video to show your support and always remember to map your way up thank you